Good morning, little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a board-certified dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we are gonna cover international sunscreens, but before I jump in, make sure to subscribe to this channel because every Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we dive in deep on a new Pillow Talk Derm, ranging from skincare ingredients to cosmetic procedures to medical conditions, you name it. My goal is to empower you through education, through knowledge, so you're a better consumer. Why are we talking about international sunscreens today? Because frankly, they are better. And I don't say that lightly. I am a board certified dermatologist and sunscreens are my jam. And the reality is the US lags behind. In the US, sunscreens are deemed as over the counter drugs as they should be because they should undergo a more rigorous process. But an unacceptable truth is that there is no newness on the market. Why are international filters better in my opinion, because they offer more options and they're cosmetically more elegant and the science behind them is better in that they allow for better UVA protection. And when something is more cosmetically elegant and something feels better, people are gonna wanna use it more as part of their daily routine. And that for me changes the mindset of how people approach sunscreens, allowing them to protect their skin better in the long run. When you are evaluating a sunscreen, you have to look at UVA and UVB. UVA goes in deeper and contributes to premature skin aging. Think of A for aging, whereas UVB is more superficial and contributes to your skin reddening effect and burning effect. Together, both contribute to skin cancer. So one is not necessarily more important than the other. Historically in the US, our sunscreens have been geared more towards UVB and not so much UVA. I've done a deep dive on this in a previous video that I will link below, but if you look at this chart over here, this has only eight approved UV filters in the US. Only two of them protect really against UVA, and that is zinc oxide and avobenzone. Internationally, UV filters are much more open towards the UV spectrum. And as you can see in this chart, three out of the six filters that I'm showing you over here offer better UVA protection versus the US where you only had two out of eight. So when you guys are looking at sunscreens in the US, they change the definition of broad spectrum and broad spectrum SPF in the US has to cover for UVA. So it has to have some sort of element of zinc or avobenzone in it, FYI. Whereas internationally, there are different ratings. Yes, the SPF rating is still gonna stand, they have taken it a step above and beyond in looking at specifically the UVA protection of sunscreen, a rating scale known as PPD, which is the Persistent Pigment Darkening Scale that was developed to really see how long your skin can be protected specifically against UVA. And the PPD of 10, for example, meant that it took you 10 times as long to tan versus without it. Now, in Japan, they took that a step further to simplify it for consumers and came up with the protection of UVA scale, the protection grading UVA scale, also known as the PA scale. And there are four levels here. There's PA+, 2+, 3+, and 4+. Plus being some UVA protection, 2+, plus being moderate, 3+, plus being high, and 4+, plus being extremely high. And this can be translated from the PPD scale. So if you find yourself internationally with a PA4+, plus, SPF 50, you know that you're probably getting the best coverage in terms of UVA and sun protection. Now, how often you use sunscreen is a question that is up for debate. I am a dermatologist and I like to simplify things and I think habits that you have are harder to break. So as a general rule of thumb, when you wake up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you get ready, apply your sunscreen before heading out. So at least throughout the year, you have something and something is better than nothing. Now, it gets a little bit trickier when you talk about reapplication because somebody in New York in November is very different than somebody in Australia in November. And you have to look at something called the UV index. The UV index measures how intense the UV rays are. And usually in Australia, for example, they recommend using sunscreen when the UV index is above three. I'll take that and tell you that definitely you wanna reapply when the UV index is above three. 
I am a very simple human that I'd rather be in the habit of applying sunscreen every day, even if the UV is an index of one. And I literally only apply it to my face, maybe my neck and chest in the winter, not all over my body because it's not getting exposed to the sun. But if the UV index is over three, I make sure to be a little bit more protective. I wanna show you guys another thing, which is also very interesting for you all to know about. In the weather app on your iPhone, here we are in New York. You guys can actually scroll all the way down to the UV index and you can see the difference. Whereas in New York at 9 a.m., the UV index is at a one. Whereas, for example, I picked the Southern Hemisphere in Sydney, right? This is already nighttime. The UV index at 9 a.m. is already at a four. So at 9 a.m. in Sydney is very different than at 9 a.m. in New York in November. So if you're going for a run in the morning in New York City in November, I'll tell you, you probably don't need the sunscreen. Go for a run, come back, shower, and then just use it like you would for your normal routine so that we know that you have a habit that is harder to break. But if you're going for a run at 9 a.m. in Sydney in November, I'm gonna tell you, apply the sunscreen before you go for a run. So this is where you guys have to be a little bit smart about where you live, the UV index, and what your quality of life is in that particular moment in time. So that is my spiel on the science behind the sunscreens. I have personally always wondered, and I've been very vocal about this, how international sunscreens get sold into the US from other countries. And after my last K-Beauty video, I was approached by Salvana themselves because I was questioning a lot of things. And I do want to say thank you, Salvana, for approaching me and thank you for sponsoring this portion of the video. This is directly from Salvana themselves, which I thought was very eye-opening and clarifying. So they only source directly from the brand themselves or their trusted distributor nominated by the brand themselves. So you guys can ensure that you are getting the real thing when you buy it from their website. And that is huge because there's a lot of fakes going around. So I am going to pick five sunscreens from their website that I personally love and you can get from them knowing that you're buying the real deal. We have also a discount code if you guys are interested in it, but they're offering the code for you guys. You guys can see the details in the description box. So starting with numero uno K-Beauty, and you cannot talk about K-Beauty sunscreen without me talking about the beauty of Joe Sean. I absolutely love this sunscreen. This is a fresh tube and I love the freshness, but this is an SPF 50 PA4+. Now you know what that stands for. It is a beautiful, lightweight, light hydrating sunscreen. So I sometimes do not feel the need, for example, in summer to use a moisturizer underneath this. It gets me to where I need to go. In the winter, as things get drier, yes, you can use a moisturizer underneath it. It is great for soothing your skin, reducing inflammation, and helping with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation because it has not only niacinamide in it, it also has Camellia sinensis leaf extract. And like everything I love, it is glycerin based. The filters in it are international filters. There's Juvenil A+, Tinazorb S, Tinazorb M, as well as Iscotrizinol. And this does offer a great UVA protective range. It's a hybrid of both chemical and physical sunscreens. So it's a great one. I absolutely love it. I think you guys should look into it and it is relatively cheap and easy to get. Then we have a second K-Beauty sunscreen one that has redeemed itself from past, and this is by Perito. This is their daily go-to sunscreen, SPF 50 PA4+. And I say this is one that is great for those of you who have underlying rosacea and redness. Why do I like it? It's a little bit thicker than the Beauty of Joshan, but it has Centella Asiatica extract in it, which can help soothe the skin. It grips a little bit more onto the skin than the Beauty of Joshan, but it's also very lightweight. There is no fragrance, no white cast. It literally blends in seamlessly. 
The third is one that I discovered through my patients in my office who came in raving about this one. It is by Round Lab Birch Juice Moisturizing Sunscreen for 19 bucks. It does have hyaluronic acid in it. I'm not against all hyaluronic acid, but I don't want you guys to be using HA in every step of your routine, especially if it is low or super low molecular weight HA, as I have seen it get slightly inflammatory when overused in the same routine. But if you guys are into the hyaluronic acid and you're looking for something hydrating, patients have told me they love this one. It is great if you have a broken skin barrier because it has birch tree sap, which does decrease inflammation and purify your skin while hydrating your skin as well. So I like to attribute it to that. It has Uvenil A plus and Tinazorb S. And as you guys can see, it feels very, very silky and it is very easy to spread. There is also no white cast and it blends in seamlessly and has no scent. So they're all pretty much the same in terms of blending in seamlessly, having no white cast, being fragrance free. And the three that I just mentioned are all SPF 50, PA4+. It, it boils down to a preference and what you guys prefer on your skin and what sits best for your skin. The beauty with these is that they're not gonna break your bank. The next one is a Japanese sunscreen, and I actually am impressed about how much I like this one. This is the Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel. This is for 10 bucks. I think this is a great primer sunscreen underneath makeup because it's also white, it is also lightweight, but it is so silky. So this is a great one if you are gonna have a full makeup look and you wanna use a sunscreen underneath it. It is extremely silky and it is extremely lightweight and it acts like a great primer and it does kind of blur your skin a little bit. So it is a blend of filters ranging from chemical to physical. There is, believe it or not, zinc in it, but there is no white cast. I mean, I'm obviously white as anything, but I've tried it on Tiffany who is of a darker skin shade and she does not have a white cast either. And last is another Korean brand also known as Isn't Tree. Nope, it's not their hyaluronic acid one. This is one that was a um, collaboration with Cassandra Banks. It's Isn't Tree's Purple Protector Onion New Pair Sunscreen. The interesting one is this is an SPF 40 PA3+. It is slightly lighter and the filters they use in this sunscreen are US approved filters. So you're not gonna get international filters in this one, but it is an international brand, which I think is an interesting twist on things. It's a combination of titanium and a bunch of different chemical filters. But the curious thing about this one is that it is purple and we all know how much I love purple, but the onion bulb extract is a very much a K-beauty ingredient story that can improve the appearance of post-surgical scars. So if you are somebody who has a fresh scar on your face or fresh acne scars on your face the actual onion bulb extract can help improve the appearance of your scars and it has supposedly antibacterial and antifungal properties to help reduce the look of acne the purple this color of the sunscreen itself does blend in over time as you kind of rub it in it eventually disappears there might be a light cast in the beginning but it does disappear so those are my Korean and Japanese um, sunscreen. We're going to shift gears now into Australia where they have some of the most rigorous testing for sunscreens. And it starts with my favorite one, which is the Ultra Violet SPF 50 Queen Screen. Yes, it comes in a dropper. I have issues with droppers because my hands get, I just, I don't, I don't care for droppers, but um, this particular one is amazing. It is, look how lightweight this is. So I was trying to give you guys two full finger lengths of this, but it is so lightweight and so easily spreadable. And it goes a very, very long way. It has a scent. It smells a little bit like rose water. I'm not going to lie to you guys or hide that fact from you guys. So if you are not for scents, you will hate it because it smells like rose water. 
but I don't mind it at all. And it is a great sunscreen made up of four different filters, Octinoxic, Octosilicate, Tinazorb S, and Tinazorb M. And it also has Terminalia Ferdinandiana fruit extract, AKA Kakadu plum plant, which is native to Northern Australia. Um, which has a high vitamin C content basically and antioxidant properties. Um, but that is why I love this. I like it because she's so light. She's so light and I don't mind the scent of rose water and it goes really nicely under makeup. It is very seamless and it is not thick. I would still use it as the last step of your routine even though it is very watery and serum-like. I would not use it underneath. So make sure you do your skincare routine and use it last. I have to give a shout out to Lab Muffin as she was the one who sent them to me from Australia. I had to wait like two months to get them, believe it or not, during COVID. And I have never been able to look away since then. The second one, and I feel like any brand with the word Friday or Sunday or Saturday takes off, but I get them all confused. But this is Naked Sundays, which is their Collagen Glow 100% Mineral Sunscreen. Now, believe it or not, this is all zinc oxide, a beautiful sunscreen with watermelon extract that offers antioxidant properties and is apparently highest grade vegan collagen. I, that I can't speak much to because I don't really care that much about having collagen in your skincare, other than the fact that it may be hydrating. Collagen in your skincare is not necessarily going to help you stimulate collagen production, okay? She is thick and she is tinted. Um, Tiff, can I get the back of your hand, please? <laughs> Thank you. Um, let us see how this blends in on your skin tone. I will say it is thick. She's not lightweight and she's going to take some blending in um, in order to become more or less blended. I still see a little bit of a white cast, but I didn't blend it in very good. So I personally don't think it's necessarily for every skin tone, if you're asking me my opinion, but it is viral on TikTok. I don't think it is worth the hype for all skin tones, but it's a zinc sunscreen. Cancer Council, these people are serious about their sunscreen. This is SPF 50 plus with UVA and UVB broad spectrum protection. It is an ultra lightweight hydrating sunscreen. It is also a mix of various different chemical sunscreens, octocrylene, avobenzone, juvenal T150, as well as one that is not approved in Japan, um, also known as enzacamine, 4 methyl benzylidine camphor, uh, which protects against UVB. For whatever reason, it is legally approved both in the EU and Australia up to 4% and it is in this particular sunscreen. But if I had to pick a sunscreen when I go to the beach, it would be probably this guy. She is nice enough to protect for a wide variety of UVA ranges and UVB ranges without being irritating like the sunscreens of the US. I'm someone who my eyes burn when I use sunscreen, so this is a great easy one to use um, matte finish sunscreen without much fuss. And last is Bondi Sands SPF 50, which is made up of four different UV filters as well as vitamin E and aloe to soothe. It is non-greasy, it is fragrance free, it is very lightweight, as you guys can see, it just kind of like, you know, goes on. Um, but in terms of uh, innovation from a UV filter standpoint, it's not wow or groundbreaking, but it is a very tried and true that doesn't seem to irritate and is fragrance free. And then we're gonna cross over to the other side of the globe and go to Europe. When I was there, and I'm only gonna talk about one that I recently bought when I was in London, it was Eucerin's SPF 50 plus pigment control tinted sunscreen. And the reason why is because anything that helps to control pigment production, I'm all for, especially having melasma. This covers for UVB and UVA range. When you guys see it circled in Europe like that, it means that it has to be at least a third of the protection. So that is great to know. There's made up of avobenzone, tenazorb S, octisolate, juvenil TA, juvenil A+, as well as ensulizole, which is a bunch of different <laughs> filters. It has vitamin E and it is also very thick. So the fact that this one is tinted, I would just be aware because I don't know if this is the right tint necessarily for your skin tone, but 
it will not have a white cast once you blend it in because it doesn't have that thick zinc or titanium. And there you have it. International sunscreens on this Saturday morning going from Korea to Japan to Australia and to Europe. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the discount code. And if you have any questions or comments below, please feel free as always to ask them or let me know. I will catch you guys next week. Have a beautiful weekend.